Hi everyone, I'm going to read in this video a few poems from Noel Rowe, an Australian poet uh, who died a couple of years ago, I believe. I met him in Jerusalem, of all places, and little did I know that it was shortly before he was to pass away uh, from cancer, I believe. So, Touching the Hem by Noel Rowe. Two Visitors This Afternoon Two visitors this afternoon, both poets, bringing with them salad, bread, chicken broth, and delicious conversation. As they spoke, the room became an apartment in Nagoya where a foreign poet ran his finger down the skin of cities he had known, Venice, Berlin, and La Paz, until each turned to touch him softly face to face in the dark. A slow afternoon that made its way around Mossman Harbour, where creaking yachts whispered among themselves about the days they raced each other all the way to Hobart, while waiting to see which way now the breeze was likely to carry them. As they spoke, I was able to believe two poets exercising civil speech are inclined to be a blessing, or at the very least, to show a better way to live. It wasn't what they said. It was the way their careful voices held the sound of camellias coming into colour. Early Sunday Morning Early Sunday morning, out the back, in the garden the birds are having choir practice. The day is theirs for now. The radio says another hurricane has hit the coast of America, that this time no one has been killed. A respected scientist blames global warming, while the president gives a speech about resolve. Trying not to think of cancer, I lie as deep as I can in a salt water bath, the first for the day, feeling the water turning cold. Late at night. I take yet another bath, this time with a book a friend has given me. Water and books. I could almost be Prospero, except I find myself having a word with my bitter flesh, saying, Well, body, old friend, we've been together a long time now. How much longer do we have? All the time rubbing where the veins have written on my heel. I'd been asleep, and when I woke. I'd been asleep, and when I woke, to smell your aftershave, I thought I might be still in the airport at Rome that day you went along the perfume shelves in duty free, sampling all they had, covering every inch of unclothed flesh with delicious scent. Enjoy, you said. Enjoy. But I was still here, and you were sitting by my bed. We talked a little, tennis, property, work, before someone else you knew who'd had bowel cancer. I showed you flowers your nephew left, amazed they'd last as long as they had. Sleep, you said. I did, and when I woke, you'd gone. I put my hand out to where you'd been, then drew it back wondering if there was any perfume left behind. On this the first of... On this the first after many days. On this the first after many days of illness I am able to walk. I make my way to where I can see the Anzac Bridge held like a wishbone over the roofs of Glebe. Above me clouds appear to be a paddock that has felt the plough, until I smell again an earth being turned at the corner of the farm, where what we called the log paddock sits besides the swamp, the great, damp, dark, in which my brother and I used to play jungle games. Like heroes from our comic books, we slip 
slipped between the shadows and the rushes, swung from trees, and felt together we could never really come to harm. In a moment he'll arrive again to sit beside my bed, and we'll remember eating red bill soup our mother made. Sundays on Sundays with our father at the Greek cafe, the milking stool from a camphor laurel branch, and evening light putting its hands into the sides of paper box. Yesterday he brought me, for old time's sake, a phantom comic with a story called Healing Hands. It is, he tells me, a sign. Day by Day Love Day by Day Love came quietly to the ward under the appearances of chocolates, kisses, flowers, hands, a relic of Mary MacKillop, as well as an icon of the Virgin Mary that I try to focus on when I feel the morphine start rippling down the edges of my dream. And then the news. My study has been tidied up. All the books are back on shelves, all the papers packed away. The desk is once more revealed as wood. All I can do by way of thanks is to say, as I was being wheeled into surgery, the anaesthetist confessed his favourite poet was John Shaw Nielsen. Tell Helen, she'll be pleased to know. Seven. I keep my feet. I keep my feet going to the rhythm of the exercise machine. I stare straight ahead at planes that pass across that tiny space the window makes. Pain. Planes flying in from the north. I dare not think how much I want to see you. Today, for the first time, I was able to walk outside, to be again part of traffic noise and smell the skin of bitumen, then turn to where fresh gardens give themselves to the warm grip of spring and say hello to a mother pushing a pram, though I did not look to see what it held of her bundled future. Buttercup. Buttercup, buttercup, says the speech pathologist to the 84-year-old whose bed is next to mine. He's had a stroke. His speech is slurred. She'll show him how to get it clear. He at first defends himself, offering her a chance to view his war wound. It's worked with all the other nurses. Not this one. Buttercup, she says then tells him she's organized an occupational therapist to check the safety of his home. She needs to verify his name, address, and marital status. O'Brien, he says. O'Brien. O'Brien. She says, that was my mother's name. He brightens up. Perhaps they share an ancestor. He knows the boats that brought his people here. He gives her names, dates, places, but all she says is, Buttercup, don't forget, we'll get you talking again in no time at all. 9. This is just to say. This is just to say, I've finished already the ginger chocolates you brought probably because I so much enjoyed your visit. Ten. They've shut the window. They've shut the window, closed the blind, and turned the air conditioner on. The hospital settles down to night sounds, televisions, buzzers, the final lap of an anxious walking frame. I lie awake, thankful for the visitors who've just gone and wondering when to take my pill. Outside the jacaranda sleeps easily, dreaming up more and more colour for tomorrow. That's it for tonight. It's pretty late, as usual. Um, hope you enjoyed the readings. Uh, let me know if you want to find out more about Noel Rowe. He was a pretty good poet. It's a shame. I'm sure you could have written a, a lot more uh, really good stuff. Okay. Right.